let's take a look at it again. I've chosen for this example the bugle that's found within the clip art library. And I thought to myself, I wonder if this could be made using some of the tools within the software. In this lesson, we're looking at the extrude and weave. So let's just see if I can do something with it. I create a vector as my rail. I have my first shape at the left hand side, a smaller shape placed further in, and the very end is a very small profile shape. So we have four profiles strategically placed. I'm going to use the over and under option and hit apply. There's the base shape for my bugle. I need to add some of the extra parts to the bugle to make it look like the original model. So I've, I have to draw a few extra vectors. We learned in lesson three and four using the tool of the two rail sweep. I drew additional vectors as my rails. I chose my profile, which was the original first shape that we used in our extrude and weave, set the component to merge and hit apply. And there's the extension of the bugle. Need to position it just a little bit over to the left. Can then create the vector for the front end of the bugle. I first select the oval I've created, hold my shift key down and select my new component. And I'm going to delete whatever's inside of that oval, sort of trimming it away. I create an oval vector for the front of the horn. With that selected, I choose the Create Shape icon that we learned in Lesson 1. And we're going to make this oval shape a dish to be used as the front end of the, of the bugle. We're getting there. Now we just need to add the extra little parts. Let's see how the opposite end of the bugle could be made. We're just going to be using the tools that we've learned. I've create two shapes that sort of indicate the profile that I want for this side of the bugle. I choose the two vectors as the rails and my profile. I choose the two rail sweep. With those vectors selected as the rails, I choose the profile, set this component to merge, and hit apply. And there's my end piece, or the mouthpiece of the bugle, using the tools that we've already learned. Now for the tassels and the ribbon. I've created some additional vectors just for this part of the design. And in this case, we're going to be using again the two rail sweep. I created two arcs, an upper one and a lower one. I choose the top arc and now the bottom arc. That will be the rails that I use for my two rail sweep. I select the profile shape. This resulting component will act as the support for the ribbon itself. It's about the same cross section as the bugle now we have an independent component that could be used to create the ribbon. I also created a vector to be able to trim this new component. I now want to create the folds. I have two arcs, left and the right, and my profile. I'm going to set this component to add, and I'm going to trim this one as well.
I select the original profile of the shape that I want, click on my component, and I'm going to keep everything within that closed vector. So in this case, I have two components that have been added to one another. I put them on their own level, and that level's property has been set to merge, so that the bottom shape, the supporting shape, and the top ribbon shape are added together, but they don't interfere or interact with the bugle itself. I now have created additional vectors for our remaining shapes that we need. Two simple circles, and we'll create a simple shape of a dome. We adjust the base height or the shape height to something that looks appropriate. Now for the last part, the tassels. I have two slanted vectors. They're going to be my rails because this will be a two rail sweep operation, making sure the rails are running in, in the same direction. I choose my bottom profile and apply to the bottom of the rails. I then choose my top profile and apply it to the top of the rails. Make sure it's set to merge and hit apply. I now cut this apart and eliminate what I don't want. So I select the close vector on the left and then the component and I cut it apart. I then select the right closed vector and the remaining component. I only keep what's inside of that closed vector. I can choose to smooth out the tassels a bit by lowering the shape height. So let's take a look. How did we do? Pretty close. We can make a model out of this and then take it into the sculpting tool to add some final touches. But all in all, I hope you get to see that by using the tools within the software, you can create many, many different shapes. Extrude and weave, two rail sweep, and creating simple components. The extrude and weave tool adds an added dimension of possibilities for your creative mind. Try it. I think you'll enjoy it. Again, the possibilities are endless. In the next lesson, number seven in the series, we'll be looking at the turn and spin tool from the software. I hope you're enjoying the series. And if you are, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get a reminder of when the new video comes out. And as always, if you need some help, send me an email at mmatmazalik.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.